Hey everybody, welcome back to Gideon Stuff. Today we're going to be re-reviewing some knives that I've already reviewed because redundancy is cool and I just love redoing a job I've already done. But in all seriousness, we are taking a look at some knives I've already, I've already reviewed, but I think there's some uh, very good reasons to do that. Uh, my reviews tend to be pretty long, so this is a good way for people who uh, maybe don't want to watch the full review with all the testing and stuff. They just want a quick, you know, Cliff Notes version. They can get it here. And also because, well, I mean, let's be honest, sometimes your opinion on knives changes. Uh, yes, we're doing this outside. It's a beautiful evening out here in New Mexico. And uh, there might be a little bit of wind, but it feels good for me. <laughs> so here we are. All right, so without any further ado, let's get right into it. So let's start with this big old boy here. This is the CH9, oh heck, what is the name of this guy? I should have checked before I started this. CH3531-G10. It's a big honking cleaver. Uh, I mean, I should have brought a ruler out here, but I mean, this is well over four inch, inches of blade. Big, huge knife, but has just a amazing action. I mean, this is a guillotine because, I mean, obviously that blade's so heavy. And you can, whoops, if I'm not under a camera, let's see. <laughs> ah. Yeah, you can pinky flick it. Um, so CH knives, they're associated with F and Grow in some way. I think CH is the branch of F and Grow that doesn't rip off people's designs. I don't know, whatever. Um, I guess, I mean, everything I said about this guy in the review, still kind of stands true. This is just a fun knife. I like this knife just because of how fun it is. Ergos are surprisingly good. The finger troil, in my opinion, is too big. I mean, you're giving up a lot of sharpened edge for your four inches of knife. But, um, I mean, Ergos are good. If you're going to be in your garage destroying boxes, this is going to have the steel is D2. It's a liner lock. Man, that action. That'll get you if you're not careful. Guillotine. Pocket clip isn't the greatest. This thing carries well for what it is. Um, a couple different color options available. These are like 35 bucks. Um, I like it. I like it just as kind of one of those weird knives. So, yeah, that's the CH3531-G10 ABCD123, whatever. So, yeah. Also, reviews for all of these will be, maybe I'll link them in the description. Maybe I won't. I don't know. You can check for yourself. Uh, next up, the Kershaw and Emerson CQC-11. Yeah, CQC-11. Okay, so when I reviewed this knife, I gave it a fairly positive review as far as I can remember. And uh, I'm actually going to take a little bit of that back. Um, so, you know... Some people might think that the blade steel, steel is one of the things. It's 8CR14. Um, I don't really... I mean, for a beater knife, it, it's okay. And at the price, I got this for like 20 bucks. It's not bad. Uh, the current versions of these actually have D2, which might be better. But, um, you know, the criticisms I had back then still stand. No finger... or no good sharpening choil. So, that's a little bit disappointing. Uh, thumb disc is not the easiest way to open a knife. I mean, as you saw there, you can absolutely do it, but, you know, it's not the easiest way. It's on plastic washers, yada, yada, yada. Uh, I actually sent this knife to Metal Complex, this exact knife, so if you want to see another review on it besides just mine, you can go check out him. He's a lot better at this than I am. But um, one of the new problems I found with this guy was actually just a couple of days ago, me and a buddy of mine, we were out hanging around, we are just kind of messing around with knives, showing off to each other, and I pulled out this one, and he's a lefty, and so we thought, you know, it would be a good idea to swap the clipboard to this side, and he could try pulling it in and out of his pocket, you know, using the Emerson Wave feature, and i just give it to him. Well, we tried flipping the clip, but these holes here, I don't know why they're here, because um, you can't screw anything into them. I mean, look down in there. 
it's smooth until you get to the steel, and then the steel is super thin. So the clip wouldn't go on the other side, and then I ended up losing one of the screws. But yeah, that's that's not great. As far as design goes, I think this is a cool looking knife. The ergos are perfectly fine. Um, honestly, if you're going to buy one of these, I'd recommend this as a toss it in your toolbox or toss it in a random drawer, and there's a knife if you need it. So yeah, that's the Kershaw Emerson CQC 11. Uh, we'll yeah 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 we'll give him like a five out of ten. Next up, let's take a look at the here we go CRKT Tueto. Um, I remember this knife when it came out. Uh, I was super excited to get this. This is one of the first 2021 releases I got my hands on. I thought the design just looked really sleek, really elegant. It's a Vox News design, so you know it's going to be good. And uh, yeah, it really did speak to me. But there were some things about it that I just didn't like. It was assisted, and it has this stupid... Well, they don't even put the blade somewhere on there. 0.4116 whatever steel. I don't like that steel at all. I've had horrible experiences with that steel. Did not enjoy the, it on this knife either. Sharpens terribly. I, I just don't like that steel. Um... One of the, I mean, the, the assisted issue I fixed because they do have ball bearings in here. I actually de-assisted mine. And it was a very easy de-assist. I made a whole video about that. You can check that out as well. Um, I've heard that people are having trouble de-assisting CRKT's new assist. And maybe I'm the only one who, who really didn't. Maybe I just need to get my hands on some, uh, some more of their models with this new assist system. But for me, it was, it was really easy. I just, I took off this scale, the spring was right there, I just took it out, put that scale back on, and, uh, well, yeah, you can check out my, my video. Anyways, about this knife, love the looks, love them, it looks fantastic, I'm a sucker for knives where the blade disappears almost entirely into the handle, Jesper Voxnes just has great looking designs, good sharpening choil on here, nice looking drop point blade, I like the little pop of color there on the back spacer, the clip is reversible but the clip itself isn't really all that good so you've got that big old screw sticking up there um it has internal stop pins which is something that i like to see just personally the action is not the best but per it's perfectly suitable especially for a d-assist and um overall i was left more disappointed with this knife than i was excited about it and the ergos Yes, for Voxnase is known for good ergos, and this knife has decent ergos. For Voxnase, though, they're crap. <laughs> I mean, they're better. The, the ergos on this guy are better than some knives, but compared to some other Voxnase designs, they're absolute crap. And also, the top of this blade is so sharp. Like, oh my gosh, do I have a? You know, what, I'll be right back. Okay, never mind. Uh, I thought I had a ferro cerium rod in my truck but I can't find it right now, and I don't want to run inside and get the one out of my hunting kit. But yeah, whatever, this is a great <laughs> fire steel striker, but I don't really think that's appropriate on an EDC knife. So overall, this knife just left me kind of bleh. Like if a more premium version of this came out, and by more premium, by CRKT standards, I mean like throw D2 or 14C28 in on it and fix some of the edges, I don't know, I just, yeah. Really excited about this knife, and it just kind of let me down, so it makes me sad to look at. All right, so let's stay on the CRKT train for a little while with the Tuna. Actually, a very similar looking knife to the uh, Tueto, but whatever. Um, so this is designed by Lucas Burnley, and I love this knife, guys. I love this knife. Um... I think this is a really great EDC knife. Um, honestly, look at this action. That is smooth. That is snappy and on the clothes. Just such a great action. And that is on Teflon washers. And this knife makes me confused because it makes me think, oh, you know what, maybe I like Teflon washers. But very snappy, very smooth. Just love that action. The blade is really nice. Have a very good drop point. I, the grind on here, I think, is really, really good. 
Um, the ergos are fantastic. Jimping's really nice. Uh, I love the pops color, the pop colors here with the pivot collars and that little backspacer. The black wash on the frame and the blade look really, really good. Um, just man, I love that knife. Um, I said in my review, I wish there were more upgraded. Ver I wish there were upgraded versions because this one has, you know, G10, a steel frame lock, and uh, the blade steel is 8CR14. And sure enough, Blade HQ came through clutch, and I almost, I almost squeezed a, squeezed the trigger on one of the S35VN and Micarta versions from Blade HQ, but I didn't. And now I'm actually kind of glad I did, because Blade HQ just came out with some MD2 and JG10, which I think I might actually get to dye blue, because you know me, I love my blue knives. But um, yeah, this is just a great design, guys. Honestly, this is probably my favorite CRKT. Just very carryable. I mean, look how thin this is. Very slim. Very snappy. Um, another thing, you don't really see very many budget frame locks. I don't know why, but, you know, liner locks are the name of the game. And I, I like liner locks. Believe me, I think liner locks have a lot of big advantages over frame locks. But frame locks, by the same token, have a lot of advantages over liner locks. So... You know, I love seeing budget frame locks. Um, yeah, as you can see, it's steel frame lock on one side, just G10 on the other side. Um, for a light duty EDC knife, that doesn't really bother me. Um, man, the ergos are just so nice. This knife just really forms to my hand. Oh, great knife! Great knife. Might put it in my pocket. Actually, you know what? Let's talk about what I've got in my pocket today. Best Tech Knives Paladin. Review come... You know what? I'm not sure when you guys will see this video. Review coming one of these days. <laughs> there, This knife will be reviewed. And yeah. One of these days. But yeah. Great knife. But the video's not about the Paladin. Get back in my pocket, bud. Okay almost done here let's move on to the Gerber Asada ah! oh this knife oh man oh this knife frustrates me on so many levels because there are so many ways I want to love this knife I okay let's start with what I do like um I love this the look of the side of the knife i like how gerber has this little pinch plate type deal here that you know it's an over travel stop and it gives you a spot for your you know thumb to rest when you're flipping it or you know you, you, you keep your fingers off the lock bar that's really awesome i love the look here this gray frame with that pinch plate again another budget frame lock uh this side you have like the, they call this it's an aluminum scale this oxide black oxide i think they call it um, it's okay. You can get my Carter versions with D2. The blade steel on this one, that my particular one, is 7CR1317, whatever. Still, ugh, not great. Um, the blade, that is a nice looking cleaver, guys. And the ergos are so good. The ergos on this knife are just fantastic. I call this blade a clip point buoy, but this knife has so many issues. So first of all, the pocket clip, basically sucks next thing the look how thin that look how thin that is that just hurts your thumb i mean focus in on there my thumb here disengage yeah it leaves a little mark on my callous thumb so yeah um next thing right now you can see i have him kind of centered and the action is Ah, the action's not good. In fact, do I have blade play? Little tiny bit, but out of the plastic, out of the bubble blister packaging, whatever, this guy was not good. Took a lot of adjusting. You can't take him apart. Lock tight shut. Horrible hardware. Um, the action, like I said, is not great. I just, maybe I'll get one of the D2 versions and try it out, but I almost don't want to. I just... I love the look of this knife, but I love the look of this knife. 
but I don't want to be let down again. I just, let's, let's get him off the table. It makes me want to cry. A lot of negativity in this one, isn't there, guys? Anyway, moving on to the last knife, we've got the Kubi Raven. Also, are you guys enjoying my dirty, stained tailgate? <laughs> oh, man. I, I hope so. I, I work hard for you guys. Um, yeah, we're going to end this video on a bang because this knife is really cool. The action is just, oh my gosh, this action is so good. Flips right out. Look at that drop. Thump. Mm, a lot of times, look, look, okay, look. A lot of times you have a knife that has a thumb hole that's kind of this shape, this small. It's, you know, in this type of area, and it's also a flipper knife. The thumb set action sometimes isn't, as, or not thumb set, but the thumb flicking action sometimes isn't that satisfying with this knife. Oh, that is so satisfying. And, of course, yeah, you can you can middle finger flick it. This is a great, great knife, guys. Um, as far as action goes, uh, the blade itself is amazing. Look how thin this blade is. It's uh, Aus 10, which is a steel that I like. Um, very thin behind the edge. I mean, jeez. I think this thing was like 14 thousandths. Great slicer. Fantastic slicer. It's a Jelly Jerry design. I think this knife looks really cool. I mean, this is the Raven. This looks like a Raven. They have some other versions with like a uh, satin blade and green G10 handles, but why would you ever get one of those? This knife is called the Raven. You need this version of it. Uh, speaking of the handles, the G10 on this guy is so nice. I just focus. I just love the G10 on this guy. Very, very nice. Um, hidden lanyard pin, which is cool. Minimal hardware. Um, look how chunky he is, though. For such, he has a thin blade, but chunky handle. Which brings me to the Ergos. So, Jelly Jerry design. There's his logo. The Ergos are so confusing on this knife, because sometimes, and I said this in review, I'll pull him out of my pocket. He's ready to cut. He's ready to work. He's so comfortable. Like, right now, I'm holding him. He's pretty comfortable. There's a little bit of a hot spot off the clip. Move back here. Ah! Ah! Everything hurts. Try and get up a little bit. Ah! Everything hurts to get... Okay. There we go. Sweet spot. Ironically, it's pretty comfortable back here. For some reason, hammer grip... Eesh, it just hurts. This little part here is pokey, but... Yeah, I don't know. The ergos are... Blah. Sorry about that. If you heard that in, in interruption. Um, so, yeah, I like, the Ergos are strange. <laughs> um, let's see here. Centering on this guy was, it's always been just a little bit off, but really not as, not so much that I would consider it a huge problem. The biggest issue on this knife is the pocket clip. This pocket clip sucks, guys. This pocket clip is so bad. I hate this pocket clip. Oh my gosh. So it's a mill titanium clip. And see this contouring that they've done here on the scales gives this this nice swoopy look. Goes really well with the design. The placement of the clip was terrible because look at this. Let's see if I can show that off. Yeah, see that? See how there's only that one little bit of the clip connecting with the scale? That means that this guy is just a pain in the absolute freaking behind to get in and out of your pocket. So, yeah, the clip, horrible. I, I love this knife. I bring this knife out all the time and fidget with him, but I don't put him in my pocket. I don't really carry him that much because it's not a fun experience to carry this guy. I'll be straight up honest. Just not fun. So, uh, yeah. But still, I give that knife like a 7, 8 out of 10. It, it, I still like that knife as far as the design and action and slicing performance go. So yeah, there we go, guys. <laughs> um, oh, move all them back down in frame. There's my long-term review slash short, quick review type video. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, let me know what you guys think. Do you have any of these knives? Do you like them? Do you hate them? Am I right? Am I wrong? Um, did you pick any of these up on my recommendation? Actually, that's what I really want to hear. 
Uh, anyways, I think that's going to be about it. From Actually, you know what? I guess, I guess maybe what do I have going on the channel here coming up? I mean, it, it, it's kind of pointless for me to do this because all my content is pre-recorded. So you're going to be seeing this probably like a month or two after I record this video. But um, I've got a whole bunch of budgety best techs on their way. Um, I really like best tech. Actually, you know what? That's something I want to point out, actually. See that f this area here on these two knives? It's really similar. Like, you've got like that. Yeah, let's get the flipper tabs down. You can really see it. You see that? Anyways. So yeah, I got a bunch of best techs coming up. Like I said, working on a review of this guy. Um, I got... <laughs> here, you know what? I know something I can tell you guys about that's coming up. Um, you might get a kick out of this. I actually got the knife right here in my truck. Because this particular thing happened not too long ago. <laughs> okay, so what are you looking at here? Well, this is the Camillus Carnivore X, I think is what it's called. Anyways, it's a Camillus Carnivore. Um, this was a knife that I, well, machete, really, that I just lusted after when I was a teenager. Just, ugh, just wanted it so bad, and my mom would never let me get it because, you know, I was a teenager and I had to do what my mom said. And so, you know, I graduated high school, and the years went by, and I just kind of forgot about this knife. And then, about six months ago, I saw it in Walmart. And I was like, you know what? My mom can't tell me what to do. I'm a grown-up now. And, you know, like I said, I hadn't thought about this knife in years. And so I just kind of grabbed it, and I bought it. And I just kind of had it just because, you know, now I can have it. You know, I wasn't allowed to have it as a kid, and now I can have it. But, um... So, funny story, well, actually, my, my cousin, Austin, he had the, he had the small version and the bigger version of this knife, and it made me so jealous back when we were kids, so maybe that was another reason I got it, but, um, I need to clean him up, you're, you're probably wondering, why is he so flippin' dirty? Well, funny story, just a couple days ago, I was out in this truck with Austin and his girlfriend, actually. I was taking them out on a little bit of a, well, not his girlfriend, his fiance. Uh, they're getting married. I was, we were going to go have a little bit of a camp out to celebrate their engagement. And, well, cookout. And I got my pickup stuck. Oh, man, it was stuck so bad. It was, it was probably the worst stuck I've ever been. And that's saying something because I'm really good at getting stuck. But I'm also really good at getting out. This time I could not get out. And the reason was because there was this big root. That got right under my tire, like right behind my tire, and it wouldn't let me back up. So, uh, <laughs> actually, my dad, he was in the area. He came to pull us out, and he said, I I'm going to just chop this out here. And he saw I had this in the back of my truck, and he grabbed it, and by gosh, he sawed that root out using the Camilla's Carnivore. And, um, you know what? I figured now, might as well make a video on it one of these days. I mean... I, I, I've never really considered it to be a, a fantastic knife, but you know what? Whatever. <laughs> we'll give it a review now. And I've been leaving him dirty for the past three days uh, just to kind of see if he'll rust or what will happen to him. I'll probably take him in and clean him up now. But, yeah, so that's going to be coming up a while from now. And, um... Yeah, hopefully you guys have something to look forward to. Well, and that's going to be the end of this video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Gideon out.